Good afternoon. Welcome to a rare Thursday training webinar here for Gold Line. Normally we host these on Tuesdays, uh, but we didn't get our invitation out uh, as usual, so I wanted to give a couple extra days for some folks to sign up. Um, I'll wait a moment or so before I really dive in uh, for, for more folks to get themselves connected. Meanwhile, the usual housekeeping stuff, you'll notice that you don't have audio options to speak throughout the webinar, but there is a chat and you can throw your questions in the chat throughout the webinar. Uh, if I know that I'm going to come to it, I'll probably address that I'll get to that later. Otherwise, I'll uh, take a moment to address whatever questions that I see in there. If you have any questions after the webinar, feel free to reach out to the Goal Line support team. They can be reached by phone, live chat, or email. Uh, and you can also check out faq.goalline.ca or goalline.ca and click on the support button uh, to access some additional support information. Um, so Goal Line support at stacksports.com if you have any questions that you want to send through via email email. Uh, today's topic is league and team scheduling. So we're going to take a look at what is involved with preparing your divisions and teams for uh, being ready to accept schedules. And then we're going to look at how to upload a schedule file. Uh, we'll look at the generator to generate a, a, a schedule that applies to leagues only. Uh, and then we'll look at how uh, the various ways that you can impact the display of schedules on the public side of your website. Um, so we're going to be doing a variety of things here. We'll also take a look, of course, at how do you add a game just one at a time? How do you change a game uh, so that you'll be all set for whatever method it is that you're going to use to create your schedule? I'm going to use a variety of demo sites here today just to make sure that we can kind of show a lot of the different options that you have, especially when it comes to how you display things publicly. There's lots of different ways you might choose to put things in your menu and different items uh, in your site configuration tool that allow you to impact when I put a certain item in my menu, what will the landing page actually be when they get there. So we'll take a look at all of those different things uh, so that you can get an idea of how you might want to adjust the way that your menu displays your teams or your leagues uh, as far as how that schedule is actually accessed from the public. Um, so let's dive in and we'll take a look first at how do we prepare our divisions and teams. First, I'll get, I guess I'll, I'll confirm what I mean by divisions and separately what I mean by teams. So a division, uh, Goal Line uses the word league a lot. So if I open this drop down here, I have a league drop down where I can select a control panel to view any of these leagues. I call them leagues as Goal Line, but you refer to them probably as categories, age groups, or divisions. Um, because if you're a league, your league might be called. Uh, for example, I know someone on the calls uh, from this organization, you might be the Central Alberta Hockey League, but you have divisions within your league. Goal Line is just going to refer to league as being, you know, U16 boys, tier one, uh, or AAA, AA. Those are all different leagues. Um, and the distinction is that you run and maintain the standing. So it's your responsibility to schedule all of the teams in that league and maintain the standings page. Things like implementing tiebreakers, and uh, that kind of thing is all uh, in your purview. That means that you are running the league. Uh, so you would have divisions where there are distinct groups of teams. If you're dealing with teams, as in rep teams, those are, uh, Goal Line refers to those as either rep teams or association teams. Those are teams that you need their schedule for the league they play in, uh, and you want to have their practice schedule on your site, but the league standings are actually maintained elsewhere. So that's when you are a rep team. When you are a rep team, you can still do a lot of the different scheduling stuff that we're going to show today. The difference is going to be that you are restricted to things that include your team only. Um, so if your girls U18 team plays against a team from Moncton and from Fredericton and from Montreal, your team, uh, your schedules will all include your team. You would never have a game on your site that includes the Moncton and Montreal if you're, uh, you know, Fredericton. So um, just keep that in mind. So rep teams versus leagues, very important to make sure that you're structured with that distinction right from the get-go. From there, once you have your leagues and all the divisions that you run or all of the association teams that you have within your organization. It's uh, just a matter of making sure that you have an active season and at least one active schedule. So from our master menu, this is the easiest place to go about it. 
I would go to the schedule section of the master menu and I'm going to locate manage seasons. Manage seasons is where I'm going to see a listing of all of my divisions, including any divisions that represent my rep teams, because behind the scenes, they also have a division title. And sometimes you might have one that plays uh, against one of your own association teams and they all play in the same league. So for example, my boys U18 rep league has two of my teams in it um, that play against the other teams in that league hosted elsewhere. My girls U18, we just have the one team team. So I don't have any extra. Uh, I just have the one team involved here, but we have the GU18 rep and BU18 rep uh, representing the league name for my rep teams. And then we have all of my division names here. In managed seasons, the first thing you'll see is what the active season currently is. So uh, if, if it's time for you to manage your season, this is probably out of date and it would probably be something like 2021-22 um, so that you're uh, ready to move into 22-23, which is uh, depending on if you overlap across the De uh, December 31st into January, you might label it 22-23 like this, or you might label it simply 22, uh, 22 summer, 22 outdoor, 22 uh, fall, whatever makes sense to your sport. Um, if you're not sure what kind of season you need, looking at the history of your organization might help you guide uh, what kind of date range you should be selecting. Um, if you are hockey and you only run one season uh, in the whole year, you can set your season up to be a full calendar year, uh, so long as it starts before and ends after all of the play that needs to be within that season. A really important distinction there when I say all of the play in the season, um, your playoffs are included. So your playoffs are part of the season. So 2023, 22, 23 is the name of our season. And inside that season, I will have at least two schedules. One is going to be the regular season schedule and one is going to be the playoff schedule. I may have extras as well. Maybe we want to set up an exhibition schedule. Maybe you want to have a tournament schedule that's separate so that you're not having standings, including games that are not actually part of your regular season schedule that determines things like your playoff standings or playoff seating. So you would make sure that you have a season name that makes sense to you. I always like to remind you, don't use the word season when you're putting a name to your season because it's already going to be included in there. Um, so just include uh, the calendar year or the year reference and uh, potentially the season or indoor outdoor kind of reference uh, as needed by your sport. So 2022-23 is the season that I am using right now. And the date range that I want to use, as I said uh, earlier, I want it to include to be starting before for and ending after all the play. So I'm going with something easy where I just want it to be July 1st to June 30th. That way it's a full calendar year and everything I'm going to do is going to fit within that. And then I manage my season again uh, at the beginning of July next year. Um, if I have a distinct off season like that, that's perfect. If you have a kind of a tight turnaround, um, you might want to look at what that specific date range should be for your organization. Um, Goal Line support team is, is happy to help out uh, making sure that you are structured correctly there. Um, the, 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 most important factor would be if you do have, if you're indoor, outdoor, or, you know, summer, winter, and there's a bit of overlap, you may actually require a distinctly different set of leagues or divisions to represent indoor and then outdoor um, so that they can uh, have that overlapping season date range without having a conflict inside the goal line system because you can't run two separate seasons at the same time for the same league or team. So once we have our season uh, date range and title here, generally you'll check all and that's going to give that new season to everybody who needs it. So if everyone's at a date with 21-22, great. If, if some of them are out of date and some of them have none because you haven't added a season for them yet, uh, then, then just check all. Uh, there may be times where you want to check some but not all, just depending on the behavior that you want to see. Um, when you're running a league and you use team registration, as you go through and, and roll your season over, you may want to select the checkbox that says to remove the previous active seasons teams from the system. What that will do is keep your league where it is. Everything's going to stay the same there as far as the details when you go create schedules, but there won't be any teams in the division. On the public side, we'll still see the history, so we'll be able to look back at last season, the season before, and so on. But in the admin control panel, you won't see those teams. Uh, as being part of any schedules or have conflicting, um, you know, a team that registered that was also part of it last year. Um, you can't have two teams in the same division with the same name. 
So removing the previous active seasons teams from the system is something you would do if you add new teams each year, uh, and uh, especially if you use team registration to get those new teams each year. Um, if you don't have that uh, issue, you don't use team registration and you just want all the teams to just stay exactly as they are, you can just leave that option um, as unchecked and create your season. The other optional setting in here uh, is about keeping the rosters. So by default, the rosters are going to all be released from every team impacted from the season rollover. Uh, adult organizations are typically the only organizations that would want to keep those rosters from season to season uh, because it's sometimes easier to deal with a couple changes than having to build new rosters. Youth organizations, especially with rep and, and tryouts, uh, often want those rosters released so that you can go and place them back on teams based on how they tried out or uh, what their, their age is this year compared to last year. So whether those optional settings apply to you or not, you'll select those and then you'll click to create your season. Now I just did this one, so I don't have to do that again, uh, but I can see here that all of my teams uh, and divisions are in an active season that has a current date range. Um, and then over on the side, I can see whether or not they have any schedules. So I do have one schedule in all of my divisions right now. I could go through and start adding the other schedules that I know I'm going to need. So I just clicked on manage schedules right from uh, that Manage Seasons screen. But the other way to get to that is, of course, just go back out to your master menu. In the schedule section, uh, we'll see Manage Schedules right here. So it's going to take us to the exact same place. So when we're looking at managed schedules, um, the first schedule that you definitely should add is going to be called regular season, because whether you're a team or a league, you do have a regular season schedule. You may also want some schedules, like I said earlier, called maybe exhibition or a tournament schedule and a playoff schedule. Playoff schedules that use the setting of playoff brackets, these are going to be schedules that are not standings based. So you do not get a set of standings for a playoff or bracket style schedule. With playoffs and bracket style schedules, those are essentially kind of the elimination style schedules. There's two choices for when you create those. They can be set up as a series with a bunch of series and rounds um, that that you configure very specifically. Um, that it's That's a fairly conducive uh, structure to to having um, not necessarily round robin play, but when you have crossover play uh, between some different pools and it's not necessarily an elimination style, the playoff series is going to be a good choice. If it is an elimination, even if it goes... Uh, uh, an elimination where if you lose, you either are out or you move to a different bracket, then the playoff bracket tree style is going to be conducive to you. And we've got lots of different ways to create those uh, based on the number of teams. And there's some buy options in there. The benefit of using the playoff bracket schedule, regardless of which, uh, whether you use the series style or the tree style, is that you can automatically base your standings and your playoff schedules that you can configure in advance off of the standings of the regular season schedule. So by the time you've reported all of your regular season games, your playoff bracket will automatically populate with uh, who the teams are based on what you selected, things like your top seed and bottom seed being first place in regular season versus sixth place in regular season, just as an example. Um, so that's how you can set up things like the buy rounds and uh, and having that automatically push your teams in there. So it takes a lot of that um, manual updating. So you don't have to go and manually update any games that you would have set up in advance. It's just a matter of uh, setting up the time, the date, the venue of those playoff bracket games. And then as soon as your regular season schedule is all reported with all the scores, the system knows then that that schedule is complete and ready to make your playoff schedule active. So uh, schedule, uh, regular season would be standings, exhibition typically also standings, any tournament schedules that you're putting in uh, might be standing style. Keep in mind that uh, if you only have rep teams, I, I sometimes forget to mention this because some organizations only have one. Um, if you only have association teams where you don't maintain the standings for anyone, you don't even see this option and every schedule essentially just behaves itself like a standing schedule so that you can add the games that are necessary, but the results and the standings are still going to be maintained wherever that schedule kind of um, came from in the first place.
So regular season is one schedule. I don't have an exhibition schedule yet, so I'm going to add an exhibition schedule here. That's not how you spell exhibition at all. Um, so let's go and spell that right. Uh, and I am going to pick the standing style. I want everyone to have the ability to put exhibition games into the system. So I'm just going to give that schedule to everyone. I don't want it to be the active schedule, though, because my regular season schedule is the active one. So I'm just going to say no to this being active. But I do want it to be published and uh, and we'll we'll publish the standings there or maybe maybe you know what let's not publish the standings for the exhibition st uh, schedule because exhibition games really don't count towards anything so we don't actually have to do that your choices on things like tracking individual stats publishing those stats how your clock works your point values um, there's some other uh, custom options that might come in here points per period or uh, custom period links and stuff like that might be part of your schedule details uh, but you'll set up all your schedule details as usual. And then when it comes to your schedule date range, you do have to make sure that this date range fits in your season. Um, it, it can be shorter than your season date range, which sometimes helps uh, to make sure that you don't accidentally overlap your, you know, uh, your regular season and your uh, playoffs. But uh, typically, especially with an exhibition schedule, I just want it to be my full season date range. So I'm just going to go from July 1 to uh, June 30th of, um, of 2023. So we'll just make that so that now any game that needs to be scheduled as an exhibition game between now and, uh, and June 30th, I'm, I'm going to have a place for that to go. So I don't have to clutter my schedule um, on the on the regular season schedule with games that really aren't part of regular season. So now we can see here that everyone's got an exhibition schedule and a regular regular season schedule. So setting up your season and your schedule, making sure that your leagues and teams are structured correctly, that's obviously a really good uh, good place to start. So now we're actually ready for seasons and uh, for schedules to get added. We're ready for some other things here too. There are some other things within goal line that are restricted until there's an active season and schedule for the league or team. So up until this point, we wouldn't have been able to do things like assign players to teams or schedule teams for practices because there's no team essentially as active if, if you don't have an active season or schedule. So now we're good to go uh, and we can upload a schedule. We can go add games manually. We can do whatever it is that we need to do. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when you hop into either a league or a team to see what that schedule section looks like and where you're going to go when it comes to actually going and creating that schedule. So let's just pick one of our leagues over here. So we'll pick uh, U16 Boys House. So when I come here, I see a similar menu to the master menu, but this is my league admin tools as opposed to master menu, um, emailing to the team, uh, or sorry, the league uh, website tools that relate to the league and then schedules and statistics for, again, this league. So I'm not impacting anything outside of the U16 Boys House League that we're looking at right now. So I can click on schedules here or I can scroll down and find that schedule section. But what we see here is the first thing that we see is the big header that tells me what my season is. So my season is that 2022-23 that we talked about. Notice how the word season is here, even though I didn't include it in my title. That's one of the reasons we don't want to include the word season. So my 2022-23 season is right here. And then my active schedule is my regular season schedule. So remember when I added my exhibition schedule, I said, no, I don't want it to be the active schedule. That doesn't mean that we can't use it. It just means that it's not the default schedule that's seen when I come here. And it's not the default schedule that I see when I navigate to this division on the public side of the website. We're going to get into looking at it on the public side later on, so uh, we'll dive into that shortly. So with the schedule, you'll see that for every schedule you have, and you may end up with three or four schedules in your, uh, your uh, division. So we can see the active one here and the exhibition one here. And then if I had more, they would be listed like this. Um, as I scroll down, sometimes uh, you can see historical seasons. So we've chosen to roll our season over. I can choose to show this information. So maybe I want to see the 2021 season. So now if I scroll down here, we can see that I had one regular season schedule in that season. Um, so if I needed to do anything to it, if I want to look at the schedule details or, or see what games were on that schedule, I can go in and manage that schedule, even though it's part of a, a past season. So I can choose to hide that. 
Um, you can do that to look at any past season. Every single past season that you've had for any of your leagues or teams is going to be available uh, for you to expand and view the details within it. Um, you can't always edit those seasons. Uh, depends a little bit on when you roll your season over, uh, whether or not you said that the other one is going to be um, not active anymore. When you do it from the master menu, the system will assume that the previous season that we're uh, that we're rolling over is going to automatically be not shown in the menu and it's not going to be editable. But you can always go back and change that to say that, yes, I want this to be shown in the menu or I want it to be editable. It doesn't ever necessarily have to become your active season again, uh, but just know that you can look back at those historical schedules. For each schedule, um, you're going to see uh, three or four different options, and it depends a little bit on whether or not it's a playoff schedule. So with our regular season and our exhibition schedule tools, these were the standing style schedules. Standing style schedules can have conferences. Um, sometimes those are referred to as groups or pools, uh, but conferences is something that can only apply to a standing style schedule schedule. If you have conferences applied to your standing schedule, that does play a factor in your playoff schedule later on. So you're always going to be able to use those conferences in your playoffs to say first place in pool A is going to play second place in pool B and so on and so on. So you can always, though all those conferences will be used on your playoff schedule if you're feeding into it. But this, the conferences themselves are really uh, designed for the way your standings are going to be uh, display. So this would not apply to a rep team, uh, but with uh, with our leagues, we would see conference set up here and we would also see generate schedule. So generating a schedule using the, the goal line schedule generator is only available for leagues using a standing style schedule. The other options that we see, of course, are add, edit, delete games and edit schedule details. These allow us to change the details that factor into our schedule. Um, so if I needed to make a change, for example, to we don't want to track individual stats after all. So I want, might want to come in here and turn that off. Other things I might do is come in and put in a more specific duration. Uh, maybe this age group plays a little bit uh, of a shorter game or a longer game. Um, Maybe there's different point values. Maybe there's a mercy rule in this division, but there isn't in a different division and so on. Um, so you're able to make those changes. You're also able to manage those conferences directly from your schedule details. And it takes you to the same place as selecting that other option. So if I select edit conferences, um, we'll just see here that I can add conferences just by typing in a name. Um, pool A is pretty common. Um, so we can add that conference. Uh, pool, so if we use pool A, we'll use pool B. And we can add those two conferences. Conferences. If you already have conferences set up somewhere, you can copy them from a previous schedule. Um, so if you've, if you've done conferences before, you can just keep copying them over so that they just get all of the same labels. But you do still need to go through and decide who is in what conference, even if you're copying the conferences, because the teams are going to be considered new for this season. So we now have uh, Pool A and Pool B over here, and I just use the radio button options to select which pools they're actually going to be in. When you use conferences, there's some cool settings that apply when it comes to should the games count if they're not in conference. Uh, and that way you've got uh, full control over whether or not point values should be calculated for cross conference games and that kind of thing. So here I've got standings only reflect games between teams in the same conference set as no. So it doesn't matter who you play, whether they're in your conference or not. Uh, if blue plays purple, they still get the point values in their standings for those games. If I say that, yes, it only counts if they're in the same conference, then blue and purple can play until they're blue and purple in the face, and it's never going to adjust their standings for them because those games are not going to count towards their point values. Only games between blue and orange would actually have an impact on the standings there. When it comes to uh, association teams, there's a lot of similarity. So I'm just going to hop over here and uh, let's just go in and look at our uh, U18 boys. So we can see here it's a very similar schedule, except for we see, or uh, menu, uh, except for we see team admin instead of league admin. And as we go down to the schedule section, same exact structure, but there's a little bit less going on here when it comes to the schedules because you're not managing conferences and you can't generate a schedule for your rep team. Uh, you're your rep team is typically going to be provided a schedule by their league. So you can still edit schedule details to do things like decide whether or not you're going to track 
or display individual player statistics. Um, and if you are going through and reporting your own individual uh, games, you may want to make sure that all of this other stuff is accurate as far as um, the duration and, uh, and and tracking those individual stats. Um, you can also set a certain amount of rules, and this is applicable to leagues as well, um, for players to be eligible to participate. There are certain registration related requirements. You do have to be using goal lines registration tools in order for those to, to work in combination with each other. Uh, but just keep that in mind that there are some pretty advanced options when it comes to how you need those teams to behave. So you can see here um, that there are a bunch of teams, even though I only have really two of these teams. So the NS18 boys here and uh, NS18 boys team two, these are my two teams. The other teams that are here were added as visiting teams. These are teams we play against and they do get a team ID in the system. But uh, as I mentioned way at the top, I can't schedule a game between Quebec and PEI on my site because I don't maintain the standings and Quebec and PEI are not coming to my site in order to view their schedule. So I'm only able to add games that include one or both of my association teams. The rest of the schedule is just not my concern at all. Um, those teams uh, get added through the team admin se uh, setting. So I'm going to go and show you that as well. So we just took a look at what we see uh, on the schedule details there. So when I go to team admin, this is where I go to add the opposing teams. So uh, you don't ever have to get rid of your opposing teams list. So if you've had them in the system for a long time, they're probably fine. Uh, but maybe uh, one of your neighboring associations has an extra team this year, um, or, you know, even if they're not, you know, PEI, I might not be uh, fielding a team for you this year. You don't have to necessarily remove them from here. You would just not schedule games against them. But let's say, um, you know, Alberta, maybe they've got two teams this year, or maybe we're going to add, uh, I don't see BC here. So maybe BC is going to add a team. I can add another team here. And this is just creating a team for us to play against. I don't care about their roster. I don't care about anything else. I just care that they have, that I have the team listed in order to, uh, uh, schedule a game against them. So now I've added that team. So we've got more teams listed in here and I'm able to start scheduling games. So my opposing teams are playing against my rep team. So this is my first one. If I hop over into my team two, we've already determined they share schedule details. They're set up so that they're, because they can play against each other at any time in addition to playing those other teams. When I go to add it at delete teams here, it's exactly the same list of teams and including BC that we just added. Um, so when you share schedule details, you really only need to set things up for uh, for one, one of those teams and they're just sharing their schedule and they're sharing uh, the opposing teams that they play against. So now uh, let's go back out to the master menu. I want to show you a few different ways to add games. So um, I, I mentioned specifically in the webinar description that we're going to talk about uploading and generating schedules. I want to show you how you add a game one at a time uh, from the three various menus that we just kind of looked at here. So from the schedule section, I can, I can actually add a game from the master menu. So add, edit, delete games exists at the master menu. But when I'm at the master menu, I have to drill down once I click on this tile. So now I need to select who is it that I'm going to create a game for? So I can see my uh, my boys U18, this is my rep team, my girls rep team, and then all of my other divisions that are listed here. So wherever it is that I want to schedule this game, that's the league I'm going to select. And then if there are multiple schedules that are available, then I would want to make sure that I select the correct schedule. So then I'm going to select that league. And now in here, I'm going to have the same option as if I went to directly to the league menu. So the teams here are just the teams that belong to my U16 Boys House League, uh, and I can pick any of them. Because it's a league, I can choose any of these teams. I don't have anything specific that I have to select here. I'll also point out that there is already a TBA option here. Um, I see a lot of times organizations will add a team to their league called TBA. Strongly recommend against that um, for, for kind of two reasons. One is if you create a team called TBA, that team is going to display in your standings. And you don't want that team to display display in your standings. 
Um, the system also will uh, do some really robust conflict checking. Um, if you're familiar with scheduling with Goalline, you cannot schedule a conflict with a team or a venue, um, whether it's a game or a practice. So using TBA as a team that you created, let's say you try to create a game that uh, a TBA game uh, you know, at the same time at two different fields, that TBA team is going to be recognized as already being scheduled, even though you're just trying to use it as a placeholder. When you're a league, you can create a TBA game. And this game could be published as TBA versus TBA. We just want to make sure that we have the, the venue, the date and the time set up here. Maybe there's some additional details, um, you know, to be determined based on such and such information. Uh, but either way, I can create uh, games between TBA or blue versus TBA, uh, or I can just create whatever game it is that I want to create. I select the venue based on all the venues that I have available. Then I'm going to select the date, the time, and the default allotted venue time is going to come in from the schedule details. So if this is the same as the default, great. Otherwise, um, you can change this here. So even if the default is normally 60 minutes, we can change this to say 50 minutes or 75 minutes or whatever makes sense. Um, so you would select all of that and then go ahead and create your game. Um, as you create games uh, or edit games, you can always send that uh, information out as an email announcement uh, so that everyone who is um, involved is informed of the game that was just added. So now we've just created a game. Because I'm still at the master menu, I can quick uh, click switch league and go and do the same thing for another division if I want to and just keep doing that and, and uh, either edit or add a game uh, in sort of a one-off situation here. So that's one at a time from the master menu. Uh, one at a time from a league is exactly the same thing. It's just that I don't have to pick the league because I'm already in it. So when I click add, edit, delete games here, I just see that add a game form with the same uh, structure as we were just looking at. When I go to a rep team menu, it's a little bit different. Um, so if I go to NS U18 uh, boys and I go to add, edit, delete games for my regular season schedule here, you're going to see a message at the top of the screen that confirms for you that either the home or the visiting team has to be this team because that's the menu I'm in. I cannot schedule a rep team game um, without being in that menu. So it has to be this team against one of these other teams. And it doesn't matter which one at this point. So it could be my other one, or uh, it could be against one of these other teams. So when I create that, it's going to, uh, let's just see, I don't want to have a conflict there. Um, so this is going to add this game to the schedule. Um, so that's the only difference when it comes to getting uh, a game added from a rep team schedule is that you have to be using your rep team that the, that you're in the menu for and then schedule against any other team. Whereas from a league, you're responsible for all those teams. So you can add games for anyone. So let's go back out to the master menu here. So that's adding a game one at a time. I'm going to talk a little bit about practices too, because it's very, very similar. Uh, it's Well, I should say it's, it's similar. Um, add, edit, delete practices from the master menu. What I do here is I can select any team I want, and I can use the control key to select more than one because practice options give me the ability to do a half or a shared venue practice or a full venue. If I select full venue, I can only select one team. Uh, but if I wanted, uh, let's see, the boys and the girls um, to practice at the same time, I can either do a shared or a half venue practice with both of those teams at the venue that I select from over here. I'm going to schedule that game or that practice for tomorrow we'll make that seven in the morning until 7 45 in the morning um, i can add practice details just like i can from any other add practice screen you can also set your practices to be recurring and this can be from any menu as well so if i was to set this up so that every friday morning at 7 a.m they have a practice um, every week uh, until you know the end of of september i can set that up like this as well um, i don't have to set that up but you do have that option and it will create the recurring practice for you um, so i'm going to end Enter my practice here, and that's going to create my uh, my practice that I set up for. When did I set that? July fifteenth. Um, so we can see here I've got a lot of practices in here already. Uh, so if I scroll down here, we'll see our practice that we just added on July fifteenth, 
or this is the 7 a.m. one here. So um, we've got uh, the ability to add practices here. Now, uh, when you're an association, this is a great place to come and add your practices, especially if you have a regular recurring practice for your teams um, every week, kind of the same practice schedule and your game schedule may vary, but your practice schedule is pretty fixed. This is a great way to make sure that those get scheduled and that way the venue doesn't appear as available for any other scenarios or, or the team doesn't appear as available um, in other um like when they're when they're supposed to be practicing so that's adding it from the master menu going to a league if you are doing leagues uh practice schedules for leagues you would do the same exact thing it's just going to be found in the general uh practice or general schedule section so add edit delete practices you would pick the team that you want to schedule so it looks a lot like the master menu except for it's only going to show you the teams that belong to this league when it's house leagues this is probably a good idea to come in and do uh but if it's if you're running just a general league, like a triple A league, you don't care about their practices at all. So you don't have to add those in. Uh, then uh, that leads us to what do we do with our rep teams? So uh, a rep team can come in and add a practice, but just by using add, edit, delete practices in here as well. Um, so add, edit, delete practice. I don't have to do anything regarding picking a team. I just pick the venue, the type, the date and time, uh, because whatever practice I create is going to be for girls U18. So that's how we add practices. So we've looked at adding games one at a time, adding practices one at a time. Uh, I'm going to look at the schedule generator next, and then we'll uh, take a look at the upload schedule file. So schedule generator, actually, I'm, I lied. I'm going to do that the other way around. We're going to look at upload a schedule file. Um, so uploading a schedule file, you can do from all three menus, and the same restrictions apply. So if I'm adding, uh, if I'm doing it from the master menu, I can do it for all my leagues and teams. If I'm doing it from the league menu, I can do it for the whole league. Uh, and then from a team menu, it has to be just that one team. Um, so just keep that in mind as you're preparing your file, uh, because if you have a lot, if you have a, a spreadsheet with schedules that are, you know, one division in the file and that's it, you can go directly to that league menu and upload the file. You can still do it from the master menu and I'll show you a little bit about how that works. So when it comes to uploading a schedule file, you are going to, again, go to that schedule section. Um, you're going to find that there is a sample uh, or a set of samples that you can download. Um, so when we scroll down here, you'll see that there are some spreadsheet templates. The template difference is the date format. My preference, if you've seen my webinars, you're probably aware year, month, day is my favorite. Um, I like this quite a bit. I find that it works really well with the CSV format um, and tends to just be less problematic than the day, month, or month, day. Um, even I just said them backwards, even though they were month, day here. <laughs> um, so I tend to get confused a little bit with month, day, uh, year. So I like year, month, day. Um, note that it is important to recognize that if you're using year, month, day, it's year, hyphen, month, hyphen, day, as opposed to the other two, which, which absolutely must use the slash. So just keep that in mind. But I'll show you a couple little tricks that I like to do in, um, in Excel. So you can download one of these templates, but you can also just start from your own spreadsheet. Uh, it can start as a regular spreadsheet, Google Sheet, Excel file, it doesn't matter. As long as it's a spreadsheet of some kind, you can start with whatever you have and then make sure that it just fits the format that we need. So I'm gonna open up my sample here. So in my sample, uh, there, this is the sample uh, download file, just the, the basic. Um, so we can see here home team and visitor team. That's pretty straightforward. If I'm uploading a practice, so let's say girls U18 over here, um, that's also the league. So girls U18 is my league. Um, so I'm going to set up a practice for them. I don't need to put in a visitor team. I just need to put in the date. So I'm going to say that I want this to be, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll do that one for Monday. So um, year, month, and then Monday is the 18th. Uh, and then what time is that going to be? They're going to uh, five in the morning because I want to punish them. Uh, and we'll do 60 minute duration there. Um, so the, the columns in the file uh, are pretty straightforward to follow. You either are going to use a duration or an end time. Um, if you prefer end time as opposed to duration and as in a number of minutes, you can certainly do that. So the end time would be 6 a.m. Um, as opposed to uh, putting in 60 minutes. So that's uh, a choice based on what whatever you have um, as a schedule. 
is uh, is going to dictate what makes the most sense to you. You can add those details and choose to show them. Um, you don't have to use these columns at all. I often delete these columns because I don't usually put details in, uh, but you can include those columns. And then there's another way we can ignore them uh, when we actually get to the upload process. The league name is really important if you want to upload your schedule from the master menu. I just generally recommend that you leave it in the file because you can always disregard uh, this column, just like we'll we'll show uh, as we as we get there with the other columns here. So the league name is important because when I'm creating schedules, I need to make sure that. Um, if I have teams that are similarly named across different divisions, which is really, really common, of course, your, um, you know, your teams all come from the same geographic area, you're going to have a bunch of clubs, and you might have, you know, the blizzard might be a team at U12, U14, U16, and U18. So it's important to make sure that your league name is in the file. So this is the division name, my uh, schedule uh, my league name is uh, the Women's Hurricane Inlet League. I just type the word women's in here. And so I've got women's and men's and then girls U18. Um, so I'm distinctly making sure that each one of these games or practices is going to be assigned to the correct division that it belongs to. Um, and then as we scroll over, if there is a practice type that I want to make sure is in there, I want this to be a full field practice. So I'm just going to put the word full. Uh, because it is a practice, I want to put prax in here. I don't want it to, add, to try to add this to the regular season schedule. So I want to make sure that I say that this is a practice. Um, for the schedule name otherwise, it's either going to be regular season or exhibition, whatever schedule names you have available. And then, of course, you're going to pick a venue. So I'm just going to pick one of these venues here and we'll just copy and paste that in. So here is my file. All nice. Um, everything is good in the file. So one of the things that I'll show is my trick when it comes to the date format. So if we take a look over here and I click on it, you'll see that originally this date format was entered in as um, the month, day, year. Um, but I like for it to be formatted this way and it gets read really easily by the goal line uh, system as a CSV file when we do it this way. So if you just highlight your column and format your cells, you should find that there's a date option. And then you should find that there's a date structure that matches um, the year, month, day with the hyphens and everything. So using that is what I like to do just to make sure that all the dates are, th are listed the same way in my file. Because the worst case scenario is that um, you could have, I mean, year, month, day has to be this way. But if you're using month, day, it's easy to make a mistake and put Put, um, you know, day, month and month, day. And then sometimes you'll have a conflict where, you know, half of them worked and the rest of them didn't, you know, uh, because uh, there's there's only 12 months. So if it's trying to reverse and you're trying to say that the month is, is 26, that's not going to work. So uh, making sure that your file is formatted correctly is definitely key. Another tip is that you should always, always, always use save as after making changes to your schedule upload file. And I say this because if you use just save, it tends to revert some features using the CSV um, file format. Um, and the feature that tends to get uh, reverted the most is going to be the date format that you selected. So using save as retains that date format um, far more reliably than using just the save button. Um, the other thing that I'll point out here is that my option in here is uh, that I have a CSV UTF-8. So as long as it says CSV and then in the brackets we see comma delimited, no problem. That's going to work just fine. UTF-8 is a little bit extra and it's really beneficial, especially if any of your team names or your venues or any other words that might be in your file might have special characters. Um, Having special characters in a CSV file can be very problematic um, and having especially accents and things like that in, um, you know, if there's a venue that has an accent, uh, accent aigu in the name, um, you want to make sure that you're encoding your file with UTF-8. So in, in most versions of Excel, it's as easy as just selecting the option here that says CSV UTF-8. This is going to make sure that the system's not going to have any issues reading the information in the file. This also goes into player or coach import files. So if you ever use a CSV file to import player information, um, keep that in mind because it's far more likely that people's names will have uh, special characters and accents, you know, O'Neill with the apostrophe, um, 
you know, uh, Stephanie with an EX on and things like that. So you want to make sure that you're using UTF-8 if there, there's potential for special characters. Um, so that's another little trick that I like to do. And then uh, make sure that you just save your file here. Because I've already saved it, it's saying it already exists. I know that. I'm just going to save over it. So that's fine. So here is my file ready to upload now. So I'm going to go and just uh, upload it. So when I select to browse, I'm going to find that same file. sample upload and I'm going to click upload. The first step of the upload process is to match the columns. So the columns that are in my file are the ones that are here listed. The columns that are available in the system are the ones in this list here. So I want to uh, match up everything as it is in the file. So the home team, I want to match up to home team. Visitor team, visitor team. Most of the time, these will automatically match themselves to the correct uh, format. But I'm always going to point out the date format because just because your file column header says this doesn't mean that that's the format that we actually see. So I am going to make sure that we have year, month, day, and this actually is year, month, day, and I'm going to pick year, month, day because I do have the other options available. Then I'm going to make sure that my start time is, is written in the same way. So start time, hours, minutes, a.m., p.m., hours, minutes, a.m., p.m., that's what I have. So I'll keep moving over. Um, the duration in minutes is listed. Details and show details. I don't have any details, so I'm just going to disregard those columns. So anytime you don't need the information, you can just go and disregard it. The league name, because I'm doing this from the master menu, is important and I do need to include it. The practice type being shared or full. Um, if I don't have any practices, I don't have to use that, but I do have practices in my file. So I am going to uh, to select that. And I just realized as I'm doing this that I'm doing it on the wrong, uh, the wrong site. So I'm just going to go real quick and, uh, and do that on the right spot. Where's my schedule stuff? I just made my screen really, really large. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Quick little interlude. All right, so home team, visitor team, start date, start time, duration. Um, so I'm going to disregard details. That's where I was here. So disregard details, league name, very important to keep in the file because if I don't have it, it's not going to know where these teams, uh, the schedule actually goes. Uh, practice type, I do have schedule name. Schedule name is very, very important. So we can see here in the, in the, the sample information below, all I see is regular. Notice how I don't actually see all the records. So this is just showing me a snippet of what What's in the file. Um, so if you had 500 games and practices, you're not going to see all of them here. You're just going to see about 10 or uh, 12. Um, and then the venue. Venue is extremely important. You have to include the venue. Otherwise, it's not going to know where your game is going to be scheduled. So we've got everything all matched. Then we'll look at the, the next option here. And this is going to be on any upload or, or uh, import option is going to be whether or not you want to import the first highlighted row. So the highlighted row is, is the one that's up here in black. It's not a game. It's not a practice. It's just titles and a column header. So I don't want to import that. But if, you, if you're if you brave and you don't include column headers in your file, <laughs> um, I, not, not that I recommend that because I always like to make sure that I'm, I'm matching things like home team and visitor team, I would, I would be concerned about mixing them up, right? Uh, but if you don't have a column header, then yes, you do want to import that first row because it is game information. So I'm going to say no to importing the first highlighted row. And now I'm going to continue. Now I'm going to see every row of data that's in the file. And if we have what I call red rows up at the top telling us there's a problem, I want to look at what the message says to determine what the problem was. The most common issue is that the date format you selected isn't correct um, or it does it's it's just not valid um, other uh, potential issues could be um, that if you like that you didn't match home team or visitor team at all um, you do have to match a certain amount of this information so the start date and time now is showing in one column so you can take a quick glance and just see does everything look good here right? Um, so it looks good to me I'm going to continue now I get to go through some individual matching steps that uh, 
either will automatically match if your con if the content of your file was was written exactly the way it is in the system or in my case i didn't write anything the same way so everything is a little bit uh, uh a little bit different here so i am gonna find something that is the closest to u18 girls so i'll just pick that um but my men's league is actually my men's harbor league so i want to make sure i select that and then notice how it says women's twice it's because one has a capital w and one is a lowercase so every instance of the word women's in the file um in the league name is going to be listed out here. Um, so if I had written it exactly as my league name is, it would have automatically set that up. So I want both of those to match there. So I've got my uh, boys here, uh, men, and my women's match up here. So I'll continue. Yes, I'm happy with that. And then the next thing is I'm going to match the team names. The team names should should match as well if they're if they're written the same. So here I have all my men's leagues or men's teams all worked out and they wrote themselves in exactly the way that they're supposed to. Uh, my girls, I knew that wasn't going to match to anything because I just kind of made it up and I don't have a girls U18 division. So I'm just um, adding a practice apparently for a random team. Um, the women's league, notice how some matched automatically and some didn't. And that is because this is not called Called, the team is not called Dairy, it's called the Dairy Milk Destroyers. Um, and then my Cadbury team is not called Cadbury, they're called the Cadbury Cadets. Uh, so I just manually match the ones that didn't automatically match. So if you use nicknames for your venues or your teams or your leagues in your file, that's no problem. You always will be able to manually match those up. So let's continue. We're happy with those. And now I uh, just do the schedule names and we'll have the, we'll do schedule names and, and uh, practice types and then venue. Um, so my practice is practice. My regular is regular season. And then again, regular is regular season. Um, and the reason it's asking for this twice is because one is for the men's and one is for the women's. So it's just making sure. Um, Cause if I said like reg season um, or just regular here, uh, it doesn't know that that actually means regular season. If I typed regular, regular season, capital R, capital S, would have automatically matched for me. All right, so we're good there. My practice types, oh, venue names next. So again, I did the same thing for my venue names. So I know that when I, when I see this, it's CHP Scotia 1. This is CHP Scotia 2. Um, this is, um, let's see here, how is that one in the system here? This RBC. Uh, well, I don't have one in here. So let's go with, um, we'll go with this is one, this is one, and this is one. So these are all just variations on the same name. So hopefully that won't create a conflict for me based on how that schedule was. So um, we'll continue. And now the last one is going to be the practice type. Um, so uh, yeah, null doesn't exist for me. So full and continue. So this is the last step. And now when I click continue, it's going to do the upload. And as it's doing this upload, it's also going to do all of the conflict checking that I need it to do. If there are any conflicts, it's going to list for me what those conflicts are. And I can export a CSV file of the conflicts. Um, so had a bunch of stuff going on here. So there were 15 new records. Um, from the file. Zero were duplicates, one record was inserted, and 14 were not because they didn't have a a game or practice in the season date range. That makes sense uh, because I prepared the season on one site and tried to upload it in another. So what this is basically saying is I can't schedule these games because my regular season schedule doesn't go all the way to September. And that makes sense. So it's, it's uh, again, yet another way for the system to make sure that you're not going to be scheduling things that you shouldn't be scheduling uh, based on what um, what your season and schedule date range is. So um, this is telling me here, whenever it's not able to upload something, it's going to tell us why that it wasn't able to upload. So it's either going to be that it was a conflict and show me what those conflicts were. But in this case, it's not necessarily a conflict. It's just that there, it's not in the date range. So it looks like the only thing it uploaded was the practice because I set that practice up to be tomorrow. So that works out as part of my schedule date range. So that's the upload file. Uh, as I said, the only difference is you can only include one league at a time if you go to the league menu and you can only include uh, games and practices that involve your rep team if you go to the team menu.
I'm going to head back out to our uh, league menu on our the first demo site that we were using here, and let's just go into Boys House League. So with your, uh, the last option for getting schedules in is going to be the schedule generator. So clicking the schedule generator button, you want to do that for the schedule that you want to generate. So if I do want to generate a regular season or maybe round robin schedule, I would pick the schedule generator from there. I'm going to check off all the teams um, and whether or not I want, you know, conference information to be in there, what the, the uh, schedule start and end date is going to be. This is going to default from the schedule details, but I can shorten this a lot. I don't want all those games to go all the way until next year. I want it to be between now and the end of September, and then we're going to have a different schedule and, and so on and so on. Um, so I select those options. I select how many games I want the system to schedule. So right now it says one. I actually want it to schedule three, um, and then I can schedule, um, you know, uh, put in other restraints on max per day, per week, time between games, which is great for schedules that are for tournaments because um, you might want lots of games in a day, but you want to make sure they have at least three hours between games and that kind of thing. You can also use the schedule generator to generate a practice schedule. You can set blackout dates so that no matter what you have for, for time slots and for schedule uh, date ranges, the blackout dates will not allow you to schedule any games. The time slots are a per uh, per venue. Um, so I would select the venue that I have time slots for, and then I would add those time slots in. Um, so if I have time slots, I would go in uh, and, and say, okay, from six o'clock on Thursday, um, from 6 p.m. until actually 9 p.m., we have this venue uh, and it's every Thursday until the end of, of September. Um, so I can set that up so that until the end of September, I have that. Um, and then I can make sure that those time slots are dedicated to just games or practices or just for the scheduler in general and save those changes. So that's gonna add 36 time slots for me because I just added three three time slots every Thursday from now until the end of September. Um, so you would repeat that process until you have all the time slots you need to generate your schedule. When you get to the create uh, screen, you're going to see how many do you need. Um, so if there's games per team, I didn't save any of these, um, but uh, if, you're, if, if you have a set of games per team, uh, then it's going to determine how many did you actually need, how many time slots do you need, and how many do you have available. So I have 36 right now, but uh, I don't have any, like it, it's not going to schedule anything for me. So let's just go back over here for a sec. I actually want this to schedule three games per team. Uh, don't care about any of those, so we'll save that. All right, team information is saved. So now let's go create that schedule. Okay, so now in order to create the full schedule, I need six time slots. I have more than six time slots, so that's not going to be an issue at all. Um, and then I have choices because I have conferences. I can choose whether or not I want it to do uh, the conferences, cross conferences. Um, so, if, you know, if you have more than one, do I want to do cross conference pool A versus pool B? Or do I want to do inner conference only for just pool A and just pool B? Um, or the full schedule, which is going to behave as if I did this too. So um, we'll select that option uh, and then I'm going to view those chosen matchups. I'm not scheduling any practices. I didn't check uh, anything here to schedule any practices. So we'll All right. All right. So it doesn't look like it was able to schedule my games. Uh, it was maybe able to schedule one of them here let's see i've got a lot of restraints in there so and not a lot of teams um so the schedule generator though uh the the, the key to the schedule generator is that you're adding your time slots and then you would see how many time slots you have you can dedicate these to specific divisions and running a schedule generator is one division at a time so it must be select a league control panel to go to that league and then select the schedule generator all of the details from your schedule details that would have been created in the first place so if i just go back out to schedules here this schedule details this is where that information is going to pull in from um, so if I have it set down here that I want uh, generator information here, so duration uh, between games for each team, uh, maximum number per week, do we want double headers? So softball often does double headers. Um, so you can set those details up and that will uh, automatically feed into what that generator says. And then you can adjust some things from there.
Um, the last thing is to talk about how do we get these to all display uh, the way that we want on the site. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that your site might look. Um, so let's go to uh, the front end of my uh, my ref site here. This is where we did our schedule. Uh, upload from. Um, so you can see here that I've got uh, an item in my menu called divisions. And because I'm multi-sport, my divisions are the sports. So I've got hockey and within hockey, I have a bunch of divisions. Um, and then if I go to other ones, if I go to lacrosse, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I have any multiple in lacrosse. I just have the one in lacrosse. Um, volleyball, I think I have a couple. Um, so when you come in here, the, the division item that I've placed in here is showing my menu groups for all all of my leagues. None of my rep teams are going to be involved here. The standings uh, item is only going to show you the standings for when you land there. So if I go standings and hockey, it's taking me to my hockey standings for all of my different hockey divisions that have active standings right now. This is just the standings page. So it's not necessarily the best way for you to display that, but it's often a good way for you to set up your division landing page. So if I go to divisions and choose hockey, and then I select one of my divisions, I'm still landing on the standings page, but it's only the standings for this one division. And I have my full league menu where I can go and view that schedule. My teams option over here is where my rep teams are listed. And when I select one of those teams, it's going to take me directly to, in this case, the team schedule in a calendar view, but the rest of my team options are here. On a, uh, the, the silver layout, or sometimes referred to as the responsive design, is going to be very similar, but the layout is going to be different. So here, instead of using the word divisions, they're using sport. Uh, but if I select one of these, like if I go to volleyball, this is landing me on news. And then I have my, vol my league menu here for volleyball, where I can click to get to standings, or I can click to get to the schedule and view that schedule. Same idea over here with teams. Um, there are teams in here that have different divisions as well. The way we impact that is going to be through our website site configuration tool. So there's a couple of different things, site configuration and standard menu settings. But first, let's go to site configuration. I apologize. I'm going to go about two or three minutes uh, to just finish this little part up uh, and then uh, and then you'll be free to go. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to look for display. There we go. Um, so I want my uh, my schedule or my my menu to behave a certain way. The uh, effects that I can have here is what do I want under my standard menu uh, standard menu settings in my second row? Do I want that to be a team menu or do I want it to be um, the standard menu items? If, if you're a single team, go ahead with the team menu and select your team. But if you have more than one team, uh, you should probably leave that as standard menu. Put leagues or teams under the divisions menu. In my case, it's default. And for me, that means leagues. But for you, you want to think about which is the primary focus of your organization. Are you a club that's mostly rep teams that just happens to run some house leagues? In which case, I would say put teams under that menu. But if you are primarily a league and maybe you don't have rep teams at all, you want that to either be leagues or just leave it as the default option. This is going to come into play when we look at a, a, another section here. League homepage and team homepage have some options. This is how you can choose what displays when I click there. So my league homepage options, when I click on a specific division, it can either go to that league's standings, that league's news, or that league's schedule. So you choose that default here. Same thing with the next item is team homepage. Team homepage is either news or schedule because, of course, teams specifically don't have standings. Generally, I'm a huge fan of leagues landing on standings and teams landing on schedule just because that's ten, that tends to be what people want when they're on their way uh, to, to those particular menus. When people are coming to a league homepage, generally it's because they want to see the standings. If you wanted your schedule, you're going to go to one team. You're not going to look at a league schedule and pick out your games. It's going to make a lot more sense for you to do it from uh, a team menu. 
The other thing, um, sorry, uh, yeah, the, uh, the other feature that plays into this is standard menu settings, which is, of course, how you make a strong impact on your actual menu. So standard menu settings is available to anybody in a gold or silver layout. If you have a standard layout, which means your menu is going down the left side of your site, you don't have this option. Uh, if you're interested in changing that, you can certainly reach out to us and we'll talk to you all, all about the other layout options. So standard menu uh, settings lets you choose what goes into the first row or the second row of your menu, what's not displayed, whether or not it's placed below an existing web page. And it also is where you can go to affect the title that's used. So I'm going to use the example of divisions. The word divisions gets thrown around a lot and it may apply to you in a different way than goal line might default, uh, default to. So when this says divisions, I can come over here and instead call it leagues or categories or standings um, because I'm going to make sure that my leagues pages land on standings. When it comes to having standings in the menu, I typically don't recommend having both because divisions that lands on the standings page is a far more functional page than just standings by itself. Leagues is going to behave slightly different from divisions because leagues are going to be listed in the way that you have your leagues listed here. So I just have, I have two menu groupings for leagues. If I choose to place all of these things in my menu, which I don't know if I have enough room to do. So I'm going to take out a few things. If I choose to place teams, leagues, standings, and divisions in my menu, I'm just going to take everything else out um, so that I've got enough room. Yeah, I still don't have enough room. Uh, oh, but that's on the bottom side. So uh, return to main menu settings. Oh, that's because I put them all in the menu and supposed to putting them as not displayed. Sorry about that. Just trying to get a quick little save here so we can see how those are all going to behave. So now if I go and take a look at the public side, we're going to see that I've got, um, this is my master schedule item. This is my divisions. This is, this is also uh, going to divisions and this is my team listing. So this isn't the most conducive and it's taking me uh, in a lot of ways, it's going to end up taking me to the same kind of places. So I don't necessarily want that. So it doesn't make sense to have all of those items in your, um, in your menu. So generally what I recommend is that you have all of the items that you're kind of interested in having, and then you have your, uh, your rep teams, and then your divisions listed because that's going to be your leagues. If you don't have leagues, you just don't place those in your menu there at all. So that's going to be how you display those and navigate to them on the public side of your site. So I'll just take a look over here at uh, a different site and we'll see how um, you can see there's some uh, lots of different options over here. So if I go to lacrosse here, we've chosen to land on news, but I can click standings. Um, over here with teams, I select the team. And this is also landing on news for me, but I can navigate to the rest of the team menu from here. So one of the reasons that I often recommend not landing on news for either league or teams is, is mostly because people often don't create news articles dedicated to leagues and teams. News articles tend to be something that organizations will choose to place at the master menu so that they're part of your homepage. When news is added to the league or division menus, then that is going to show it uh, in those league and team uh, landing pages when you get over there. Um, but having news be the default landing page when you don't actually create league or team specific news articles um, just ends up being something where the, the person coming to your site is going to have to click more than once. Um, so that is uh, really kind of the conclusion of our webinar. I guess the last thing I'll show you, because this is um, a really... Uh, really convenient one for your parents, if, uh, players and parents, is that every schedule has an option to subscribe. So you, you can subscribe to that schedule. Um, you can do this from the league menu. Most of the time folks are going to do it from the team menu. Um, and so the team, uh, there, yeah, okay, so there's nothing, <laughs> nothing scheduled. They don't have an active one because I was doing this on the other one. Uh, but when you subscribe to that schedule, um, I use Google Calendar a lot. And when I subscribe to my schedule, it automatically updates updates everything on my Google Calendar for me um, so that I can come and check the website for the schedule or I can just rely on my Google um, my Google schedule as well. So um, subscribing to calendars on the public side is something that your parents will often want to do so that they get uh, their, their schedule uh, right on their, their preferred calendar as opposed to having to go look for it elsewhere.
So that is uh, today's webinar on scheduling. So we looked at how to prepare our divisions and teams and make sure they're ready to receive schedules. How do we upload uh, a little bit on the schedule generator, how we add practices and games one at a time, and then all of the various ways that you can uh, impact the way that your schedules and standings display on the public side of the site. Um, if you have any extra questions or anything uh, that you'd like to see more in depth or have questions about uh, that the support team can help with, as I mentioned earlier, faq.goalline.ca or goalline and click the support button, uh, goal line support at stacksports.com. Uh, and we've got live chat and, uh, and phone options as well. Uh, current support hours are Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. I'll stick around for a moment or so here if there's any questions uh, to throw in the chat. But thank you so much for your time today. And thanks for watching if you're watching on a recording uh, later on. I guess I'll, I'll caveat before you guys all hop out. You're going to be able to watch this back anytime as well. As soon as we close the webinar, you're going to receive an email with a recording of it. But we also throw most of our webinars up onto uh, our Goal Line YouTube channel. So if there's any topics that you haven't seen a webinar on, there's probably a recorded version on our Goal Line YouTube channel. And this one will be up on our YouTube channel shortly as well if you want to share it with any of your colleagues. So thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful day.